Okay, guys, who's ready to make some money? There you go. Okay, so uh, we've been talking technology, and uh, I do need a clicker. Right, that's technology. So both Lynn and Sunil, uh, in the morning, they talked about how technology is, if it works. Yeah, how technology is ready, right? Uh, sometimes takes a couple of clicks, but it is ready. Uh, the answer is we've made a lot of strides thanks to vendors um, and you heard Intel, you heard Nokia. Uh, the vendors have made a lot of strides um, and that's because the service providers have had a thirst of moving towards SD and NFE, right? The thirst is pushing it along. And I would say uh, technology today is no longer the barrier to take SDN and NFE forward. We've made, take a, we've made a lot of strides over the last year, last two years on where we need to be. Uh, we've all talked about organization changes over the last few years that uh, truly to make this successful, you need, uh, you need to bring things together, you need to make changes to the organization. And honestly, again, seeing a lot of strides in there within the, org uh, within the service provider space, within the vendor space, uh, bringing it all together. So when we see technology, when we look at organization and we say, yes, we've made the strides. Yeah, we've not uh, dotted all our I's, we've not crossed all our T's, but you know what? It's time to make business. It's time to make money and make business our focus. Why? Few, again, giving you some examples of completely unrelated space. How many out here knows of a company called Opera? Anybody? Ah, there are a few hands, that's great. Uh, how many of you know of Google? Everybody, right? So Opera's been, that was, uh, they were actually innovators, they came in a long time back, very good technology, when you look at it from a technology perspective, uh, in the browser space, in the search engine space, uh, overshadowed by Google. Uh, let me give you another example. How many of you here have been BlackBerry users? Come on, I was expecting all the hands to go up. Sometime, uh, one, one of these days, right, over the last 20 years, almost all of us have used Blackberries, right? But today, I don't know, do we have any BlackBerry user in the space? And again, not to pick on a company, but BlackBerry had an amazing go-to-market strategy that captured the B2B market space. There was the way to go. Did not evolve. And guess what? Apple came in and Androids came in, killed it, right? So it's about, it's about go-to-market. It's about not waiting till the last minute uh, or till you've uh, crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's to actually make that move and start making money. So how do we make money? Again, it's not rocket science, right? We have all been in this business for a long time. The goal is to make money. And the way to do this, uh, uh, give you four top things that we need to focus on. And again, this is what we've learned from our customers and I'll give you some examples. Uh, but four top things. Uh, Sunil just was talking about uh, automation, about digitization, what you need to do that. Yes, I agree, digitizing operations is important. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit what that means. Uh, again, uh, giving you an industry example, uh, if you've heard of a company called Rivigo, that's actually a company here in Europe, uh, they do fleet management. And they've truly been able to make fleet management a science, no longer an art. The way they've digitized it, to the extent that they know when a driver is getting tired and needs to swap drivers out, right? Amazing technology, amazing automation. Experience. Um, Again, um, I'm, fr I'm from the U.S. and uh, when I was growing up, I was talk I, I used to go to Blockbuster, right? That was my place for watching movies. There are no Blockbusters uh, available anymore. Now when I have to watch movies or when my kids watch movies, they go to Netflix, they look for it, and it's on demand, it's there. They feel empowered, they know that that's what they need to watch, that's what they want to use when they watch movies. Nobody wants to go and get a DVD. It's empowering the customer, it's changing the experience. Being able to offer newer services, right? Um, Zipcar, amazing example. 
I mean, when we talk about renting a car, you would go to an Avis or a budget or an enterprise or somebody and uh, rent a car for a day, for a week, however you want it. But that's, that was the only way, uh, book in advance, uh, seven days in advance, 15 days in advance before you could do it. Today, I get a zip car, I can rent it for an hour and I'm good to go, right? Change the business. New business models, yes, we can talk about Google, we can talk about Apple, but a very uh, interesting uh, model would be Uber, right? How many of you have here have not used Uber ever? Anybody? Okay, I do have a few hands. I can promise you all of you will, right? It's a completely, completely different model. Same concept, everybody needs a cab ride. But today, if a city has Uber, I prefer to use Uber, more control, and the business model is amazing, right? Uh, at least from a customer, uh, from a consumer basis. So if I look at this um, uh, from, uh, from how I make money out of this, let's take this into the SDN and the space. Let's look at how some of our customers are actually making money by leveraging these uh, concepts, right? So here's, Here's a, a tier one customer right here from uh, Europe um, with, where we basically, we started about a year ago and launched their first service in 12 weeks, right? Again, the goal was I want to be able to digitize my operations and uh, digitize it to a fashion that I can actually launch services fast. So our, that was our goal. That's where we wanted. It wasn't about, guess, uh, I want to blow my, I want to completely churn my ocean. No. So first service, 12 weeks. How did we achieve that? Went into a DevOps mode. Went into a point where we said, guys, we can't work as a customer and a partner. We need to, sorry, customer and a vendor. We need to work as a partner, right? Truly work together. Daily scrums. Again, scrums not new, right? Everybody's using it. But taking it to the next level, where, and it doesn't have to be all in one place. We were actually a virtual scrum team working on this globally because here's a global customer that uh, has offices all over and we needed to, this to work. So uh, when we launched our first service in 12 weeks, the goal was, okay, let's do it in sprints, three sprints, let's get our first set of services out. What was the output? Output was something that took them nine months was now available in 12 weeks. They were able to generate revenue six months faster, right? That's money in your pocket. As a service provider, that's money in your pocket because now you've got six months of extra revenue. Because of the way we went on in this DevOps and uh, what it gave basically is for every consecutive service, we were able to reduce how you bring in new functions, how you bring in new uh, network functions and bring new services to customers faster, right? So simple example, again, of customers actually leveraging this, using this today, um, the power of automation that allows them to generate revenue faster, right? It's about time to market. Second one, customer experience. This is another tier one provider here in Europe where the focus was let's empower the empower our customers so we were helping we were working with our customers to empower their customers and a lot of time empowering your customers is not necessarily uh, giving the control to your customers it's about the perception of control to your customers right and the way the way that you provide that perception is when your customers feel that they know what they are getting they know what they are paying for they know what that when they need something, they want to consume something, it will be available to them when and where they want. When you provide that, right? When you provide that, give them again, uh, going back to uh, the example of Netflix. What Netflix did was the way they uh, moved out of, uh, moved Blockbuster out of this was because they were able to pro uh, give the customers, today my kids, they can't even think about going and getting a DVD, right? Why? Because they feel that they have the uh, power to go and consume when they want, how they want. Two, uh, two challenges with that. One is, I don't have control anymore. That, that's a different discussion. But uh, the, uh, when you look at from a consumption perspective for Netflix, the consumption goes up. 
right? When you feel that you can consume when you want, how you want, and you have the control, it creates stickiness and it creates more consumption. For this customer, what we saw was, yes, they, uh, they were able to increase their conversion rate by about 15%, but more important was they were able to upsell almost 4X, right? That's a huge number. As you look at, and the primary reason was that they were not spending so much on trying to tell the customer to buy. The customer felt, I can come in and buy because I have the control, right? Over the marketplace, over uh, the self-service uh, capabilities that, make, make, that we made it available for them. That's the way to consume. Moving on. Um, of course, you do want to try and enter a new market. When you look at uh, the service provider arena, one of the most common themes are you're either focused on consumers or you're focused on enterprises. There is this big gamut of uh, businesses, what we call small, medium businesses, that people try to get to. It's a challenge. How do I attract that? Because here are these customers who actually want enterprise services, but either at consumer prices or consumer times, right? And so getting to them was becoming a challenge. So this customer of ours, uh, and this is a customer in LATAM, they came up with a unique way of solving this. What they said is, guess what? Let's automate and virtualize the uh, services that we're offering to our enterprises, right? That allows us to reduce our cost of sale. Let's offer it to the SMB market, right? Now, because my cost of sales gone down, I can actually afford to offer these uh, enterprise services to my SMBs. And let me test it out on my SMB customers. If it works, great. If it fails, I fail fast and I move on to the next service. And I continue to working on introducing these new services, testing them out and uh, basically perfecting them. Once I'm done, once I'm uh, through with that, then, and I see that, yes, there's a take, I take this, evolve it, and start offering it to my large enterprise, medium and large enterprises. And as my large enterprises start consuming it, I get more experience out of it, uh, more challenges out of that, and say, ah, okay, now I know what uh, needs to happen, what is missing, what needs to be automated. I automate it further, I add more virtualization concepts, and I start offering it to my SMBs again and created a virtuous cycle out of that, right? So gain the experience out of your uh, uh, large enterprises, use it for your SMBs, test it on SMBs, perfect your solution, and take it back to large enterprises. That's an amazing model. I mean, uh, it, it was great to be associated with that. We're having a lot of fun out there, trying new things and being able to capture new markets. Again, uh, immediate increase of 40% to your target market segment, right? That's a big increase in a, in a place where you're looking at a saturated market where, uh, where your customers are um, basically coming to, a, you're coming to a point where you're just cannibalizing each other's business, trying to see how, what do you sell more or how do you sell more or who do you sell more to? That's, that's a uh, amazing uh, uh, capability to have, where you've been able to open up new markets for yourself. Last but not the least, talking about uh, an Uber or a Zipcar of coming up with new innovative business models. So here's, here's an interesting customer. It's not a service provider, it's actually an over the top player. Um, from here, from Germany actually, not from the Netherlands, from Germany. Um, and this customer, they were box resellers. They would take uh, basically router boxes, they would take uh, uh, firewalls, and they would resell it to enterprises. With virtualization, uh, um, basically the thought process was, okay, if I can virtualize everything, I can start offering it to my customer, why do I need to be just a box reseller and work on low cost, low margin business? Why can't I expand my business to be a full cloud provider? And what they did was move from being a box reseller to a full cloud provider. 
And what do you mean by a full cloud provider? They're basically now offering public and private clouds to customers. So they're not creating their own public clouds. They're leveraging Amazon. They're leveraging uh, Microsoft um, and uh, basically utilizing their cloud platforms. They have their own private cloud that they're offering to customers. They're offering VNFs to customers instead of uh, selling them boxes. And now they've added applications on top of that. Um, um, simple examples like Microsoft Office 365, right? Again, argument is customers can go and get all of these today at 20 different places. But what these people did was this, this customer of ours combined all of this and became a one-stop shop for their customers. That has a big, big, big value for your customer. When you have a one-stop shop, when you have basically you know that I can go to this uh, entity and get all my needs fulfilled, that suddenly adds a lot of oomph to what you're offering. This helped them immediately, or I, should, uh, I say immediately because uh, uh, our first launch here again was in about 12 weeks, they got their, um, uh, their first set of services as they moved from uh, from box reselling to um, uh, to cloud uh, cloud provider, being a cloud provider. So yeah, yeah, for 12 weeks, it's becoming like a standard nowadays for us. But what they saw was, number one, because they were offering things from the cloud and because they were no longer working on a low margin resale business, um, they saw an immediate uplift of 15% in their profit margins, right? Now I'm hoping as, as we continue to go forward, as they continue to move more and more from box to cloud and they add more services, the expectation is that they will see a revenue uplift in, an hockey, uh, in a hockey stick fashion, right? That's the goal. So again, the idea is we now are at a point where yes, we can continue to do uh, technology evaluation and we can continue to look at what, where the technology takes us, but we can start making money. And these customers are paving the way, they're showing that uh, we are there, we are there, we don't need to wait. Um, the service provider um, um, community as well as the vendor community has been doing a lot of work in this space to actually take us to a point where we can actually start generating revenues. So to summarize, yes, you do need to energize your sales teams. If you continue to comp them on box reselling, then that's all that they will do. So you need to change how you, um, uh, how you energize them. You do want to adopt a multi-channel uh, sales strategy, i.e. give the perception of control to your customers. You do want to move into a DevOps and a design thinking mode of automation to ensure that you can actually generate revenue faster. And last but not the least, drive operations top down. Look at the services, not at the functions. Look at the services that your customers would want to consume. Focus on those, uh, on those services and be able to launch services fast. They'll help you accelerate, uh, accelerate growth. They'll help you generate revenue and help you generate revenue now, not two years later. Thank you.